All right. So, okay, we'll leave the setup here as it were, and we shall see how this is going to be true. Okay. Uh, so, why is this going to be true? So, we have this. Yes. No, k won't. It's actually going to have to be the algebraic multiplicity because ultimately the whole size of the matrix is n, and the sums of the algebraic multiplicities will be n, n. Otherwise, you will not have an operator that is of the appropriate size. So it has to be n cross n. But we we are breaking it down into its smallest possible constituents. Yes. Yeah, we will we will see all of that. So those are those are what we are trying to get you to see through all of this analysis that we will do. So we will, this is going to be a rather short module where we will see this proof and then we will see one immediate conse consequence and maybe we will delegate the proof to the next uh, module. Okay. So why is this going to be true? It is actually quite simple. If you look at this expression here, this is what holds the key. We have split up the monic polynomial that is the minimal polynomial into co prime factors. So therefore, this is definitely going to be true. So this is going to be the proof. Consider any V belonging to this. So if I act on V using this left hand side of this operator, what is it? I have A of A times P of A acting on V plus B of A times Q of A acting on V is equal to V itself, all right. What can you say about this object and what about this object? Here is the claim. This belongs to the kernel of, no, it belongs to the kernel of QA, does it not? If you hit this fellow with QA, because of the commutativity of the order of multiplications, this is QA times AA times PA, so that is AA times QA times PA, but QA times PA is mu A, mu A of A is 0. So this pulverizes this and by the same token, this fellow belongs to the kernel of PA. Is that clear? Please ask if this is not clear. Okay, let me write it down, okay. Look at QA's action on AA times PA acting on V that is equal to QA times AA times PA times V. Now I am going to flip the order of Q and A because matrix polynomials, it does the order does not matter, they commute, yeah, univariate. So it is AA times QA times P A acting on V, but that is nothing but A A times what is this? This is mu A, right? So mu A of A acting on V. But of course, this mu A of A is 0. Yeah. So this means this is equal to 0. By the same token, if you hit this object with PA and flip the order of multiplication between BA and PA, you obtain the conclusion that that belongs to kernel. So this just means that we have shown what? That V is at least a sum of these two subspaces. In order to show that it is a direct sum, we will have to show that if there is something that belongs to both of those kernels, then it can be nothing other than 0. So suppose uh, V1 belongs to kernel PA intersection kernel Q 
QA, what does it mean? Implies P of A acting on V1 is equal to 0 and Q of A acting on V1 is equal to 0. Now, so that's the reason I didn't erase this from the left hand side and only retain this. This is true. Holds. Yeah. Hence, V1 is equal to AA times PA acting on V1 plus BA times QA acting on V1. But individually, this is 0 and this is 0 because it must belong to the kernels of both of PA and QA. So therefore, this must be 0. So only the 0 vector can live inside the intersection of these two fellows. So on this side, I have shown that V is a sum of kernel PA and kernel QA combined with the fact that there is nothing in the intersection except the 0 vector. I can now conclude that V is indeed equal to a direct sum <coughs> right yeah so whatever I had said very sketchily in the previous module towards the end to motivate our quest for this let us just try and be a little more formal and write it down. So now that we are, we are convinced that this is true, <clears throat> so suppose A is an operator from V1, V2 itself, let us look at it as a matrix now, again just a matrix, okay, because it is the same thing finite dimensional vector space. So let us say B1 is a basis for kernel PA and B2 is a basis for kernel QA, all right. Then BV is equal to B1 union B2. We have proved this. Right? This you are convinced? If it is a direct sum, then you just cook up individual bases for the subspaces, stack them up together and you get the basis for the entire vector space. So this is true. So look at um, A now represented through this basis. What do you think it is going to look like? What is this going to look like? See now you have gotten exactly what you dreamt of. We saw that if one of the subspaces is A invariant and the other the complement part is not, then you only get block triangularization. There was this A11, A12, 0, A22. But if both of them were A invariant, you would get exactly block diagonalization. So then this would look like A11, let us not even talk about sizes at the moment, where, what are these objects, A11 is equal to what, how do you define this, right, so it is A restricted to the kernel of P A, yeah, represented in terms of B 1. Does this make sense, this notation? Because look, I cannot just consider A acting on the entire vector space, then I would have to consider the whole, after all, what is a matrix representation? 
I would have to look at the action of A on every element in the basis and then give its coordinate representation. So that coordinate representation would entail an n-tuple. But A11 is not an n-tuple, right? The columns of A11 are not n-tuples. So I'm just restricting myself to live inside the kernel of the A. And yes, 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 exactly. So I'm, this is this is this is the bar. That is the restriction. Okay, yeah. So I said in words. So this is the action of A restricted to the kernel of P. A. Okay. So therefore, you need no more than the basis elements in B1. But you're also going to represent it in terms of B1 alone. You're not going to represent it in terms of BV. If you did, you would have to consider this entire thingy. You understand? So that's why it matches, the size matches up. Similarly, A22 would be A restricted to the kernel of QA represented in terms of the basis B2. Any doubts about this? So we are letting A act on only that subspace, not any arbitrary vector, not any arbitrary vector, but only vectors inside kernel PA and then representing the, because it's A invariant, the resultant is also going to live inside the kernel PA. So represented in terms of just the basis fellows in B1, not BV. Again, if you did BV, then you would have had to look at this entire object here with zeros padded together. But we are not interested in that. We just want to look at the block diagonal, how to evaluate them. Okay. So here's the interesting deal. What do you think is going to be the minimal polynomial of A11 and A22? Why? They are definitely annihilating, but how do you know they are the smallest degree? Right, then there will exist some yeah. smaller degree polynomial which polynomial times those. Factor of that is a factor of the minimal polynomial. If there was a lesser degree, then that would have ended up polarizing <coughs> the overall A and therefore the minimal polynomial that we are claiming would not be. So I will just outline the proof. We will not do this in detail today. I will just outline the proof that your friend has suggested and we will exactly follow that same reasoning. What is it? We will look at this kernel of PA. Okay. So look at PA acting on this fellow. Because there is a block diagonal. The critical observation is if you raise this to higher and higher powers, what happens? It is just, if you square this, it is just A11 squared, A22 squared. That's what you do, you decouple them completely. So if you let P act on this entire A, it's like P acting on A11 and P acting on A22. But P acting on A11 is what? Look at this. P acting on A11, what is? the basis for A11 constitu constituted of. You are looking at fellows inside the kernel of PA. Yeah, they have to be identically 0, right? So this block will end up being 0. This block will end up being PA22. Similarly, if you hit it with Q, you will have this QA11 and this will be 0, right? So, definitely, then P is an annihilator or lives inside the annihilating ideal for A11 and Q lives inside the annihilating ideal of A22, right? Is that clear? See, what I am saying is the observation stems from raising A to higher and higher powers just leads to these fellows individually being raised to the same power. And if you add those polynomials, you eventually end up getting P A11 here and Q a P a P A22 here. But P A11 cannot be anything but 0. Why? Because after all, these are vectors. If you look at the operator represented in terms of the basis, this is the action of P A11 
on fellows in the basis of kernel PA1, PA, right? So they must vanish. The first, if you call this K and this N minus K, so the first K columns must vanish when hit by PA. So I'll, okay, no, I promised I'll not write. I'll do that next day. If you, if you grasp this, it'll be easier to follow next day. If not, don't worry, we'll write this formally. So I'll take just two, three minutes to explain this. The idea behind the proof, it'll be easier to grasp next day. The idea is, if you raise this to higher and higher powers, this one becomes A1 to the power R, this one becomes A22 to the power R. So by the same token, this one just becomes, when hit by the polynomial PA, it is P acting on A11, this is P acting on A22. But what is P acting on A11 after all? Isn't that the first K columns of PA acting on the elements in the basis set B1? But what are elements in the basis set B1? They're exactly the fellows in the kernel of PA. So when PA acts on fellows in its kernel, it takes it to zero. So the first K columns must be zero identically and therefore the first K by K block, of course, is just a restricted version. That is also zero. Similarly, when QA hits this, this fellow vanishes, this becomes QA11. So the point I'm making is that P definitely is an annihilating polynomial for A11. Q definitely is an annihilating polynomial for A22. But that does not necessarily immediately make them a minimal polynomial for A11 and A22. Because after all, any annihilating polynomial is not the minimal polynomial. The minimal polynomial is the smallest degree annihilating polynomial. If it's monic, it's the. If it's not monic, it's a smallest degree polynomial. Okay. So now we have to show that if there is some other claimant to this throne, who says that I am the minimal polynomial, not PA, then that fellow has to show that that fellow's degree is less than P. That fellow's degree is less than P, then PA can be generated by that fellow. So PA is equal to some, whatever, G times that other claimant, G times that mu A11. If that is so, then we will arrive at a contradiction. What is that? You hit this, this will become zero with that mu fellow the new claimant and this will become non-zero. You hit the other fellow similarly and that will also have this one structure as QA11 and this fellow vanishing. If you multiply two two by two block matrices in one of which the second block diagonal block is zero and the first one the first diagonal block is zero, what is their product? Zero. So then you would have gotten a zero matrix or a zero operator through the action of two polynomials which are of lower degree, whose cumulative degree is of lower degree than the minimal polynomial of A. Because P's degree plus Q's degree is equal to the degree of the overall minimal polynomial. Now you have another polynomial, say mu1 and mu2, whose individual degrees are less than P and Q, but they together, when they are multiplied, they become an annihilating polynomial for A. By the very structure that they endow this operator with, they become an annihilating polynomial for A. So therefore you have a new claimant to the minimal polynomial of A itself, which is definitely a contradiction. So therefore, P and Q, so this is a beautiful factorization because now, from hereafter, if, once we prove this in the next lecture, hereafter we shall just focus on these individual blocks and see how better we can massage them. Because what is the question now? You have a minimal polynomial, minimal polynomial that is factorized into x minus lambda i to the ki. Those are the smallest possible factorizations into uh, co-prime or irreducible kind of polynomials, right? And then each individual irreducible polynomial then becomes a minimal polynomial for this block. So we can now say, okay, first stage, just get it down to its minimal polynomial, split it up into its factors, and now you have gotten into this stage, a11, a22 till akk, all number of distinct eigenvalues. Now, once you've gotten that, if you now want to further break it down, you had better look at this. So our next step would be, we will only restrict ourselves to matrices whose characteristic, or sorry, whose minimal polynomials are of the form x minus lambda to the power k. Okay, and from there we will see that we can further break this down. Matrices of that form x minus lambda to the power k they can always be split up into some matrix plus some nilpotent matrix 
which will allow us further to get into the Jordan canonical form. Okay? So in the next module, we shall first establish whatever we have said in words that the individual minimal polynomials of these are nothing but P and Q and then we will push ahead with a particular type of matrices whose minimal polynomials are given by x minus lambda to the power k. Okay? Right. Thank you. No, not necessarily diagonalized at all. So we want to do now the best possible with this. That's the next goal. Once we have the have them split up into all the distinct poly, every distinct eigenvalue will correspond to one block. But the blocks themselves are not of a nice structure necessarily. They can be any random structure. So if we can also massage them to a very nice structure, so as to get the best possible decoupling. See, at the end of the day, it's always about the best possible decoupling that we can get, right? So we are not even happy with this. We are want to further now zoom in on this and get it to its further smaller, smaller decouplings, right? That's, we want to break it down into its smallest possible ingredients, okay? Thank you.